Now to actually display some graphics. There are several different types of graphics that will be in the game. The first one is an animated sprite, like for a character. Each frame of the animation is in the same image file laid out in a sprite sheet like this. Similarly, there are tile sheets that aren't necessarily animated, but have all of the possible tiles for a level in the same image. And the last type would be something like a title image, where you use the entire thing and you're not going to crop out a particular tile or frame. Just to get you acquainted with a word you'll be hearing quite a bit, Glitting refers to two bitmaps being combined, such as drawing all the on-screen game images to a single buffer and then drawing that to the screen. Sprites and sprite sheets should have a power of two dimension. Although it doesn't generally cause problems with software rendered games, I have experienced some hardware rendered games not run on lower end machines because of irregularly sized textures. While you might think that it is not necessary to take this into account for the same reason you may ignore optimization, being that our computers should be modern enough and fast enough to not require such things, it's still a good idea. For one, adhering to a standard size helps streamline things, and two, it's better to err on the side of caution. You want as many platforms as possible to be able to play your game, right? When you move on to 3D, it all just runs better if you use some power of two for the dimensions. This might create unwanted extra space on your sprite, but you can make up for it in the code by specifying what the solid region will be for the collision detection. Before we get into the code, let me just quickly go over the concept on how to draw to the screen, as it can be confusing at first. In every game, after initialization, you go into a game loop. Every time through this loop, we check the input, update game elements, and then draw everything. For 2D games like this, you'll want to draw what is further in the background first, so we'll have the background tiles first, and then maybe items and characters. So draw the background, items and characters all to the buffer first. After that's done, draw the buffer to the screen with this function. STL flip will handle double buffering and clearing the buffer, so that's all you need to do there. In SDL, our images will be called SDL surfaces. Before you use any graphics, you have to create them. When loading in the image, you have to tell SDL what color is the transparent color as well. Here's what your code will look like. First you'll create the surface, saying SDL surface image name. Then you'll set it equal to SDL load bitmap and the file name. Next we'll want to make that pink magenta color transparent. First we create a uint32 named color key. We'll set this equal to the SDL map RGB of the image format 0xff0 and 0xff. Next we'll use the function SDL set color key for the image to SDL src color key and then our color key integer. The reason why we usually make magenta or all red, no green, and all blue transparent, is because it's rarely used in sprites. It's a really ugly shade of pink. Not quite as ugly as my DS's pink color though. In SDL, its blit function takes drawing and cropping coordinates from two rectangle objects called SDL rect. Location.x and location.y are going to be where the image is actually drawn to on the buffer, or the destination surface and the crop.x, crop.y, crop.w, and crop.h denote what off the sprite sheet you'll draw. So the function is SDL blit surface, the image to draw, the crop rectangle, the image to draw to our buffer, and the location rectangle. Once you draw all the images to the buffer, use STL flip to draw the buffer to the screen. A steel flip handles double buffering and clearing the buffer for you automatically. Always remember to destroy the surface of everything you create, including the buffer, or you'll have memory leaks and your computer will slow down over time. So that's about it for the graphics now. In the next video, we're covering loading and playing sounds. See ya!